Good morning, everybody, or evening or afternoon. Um, appreciate you being here at the webinar today. Today we are working on the dragon wands. So the dragon wands have really shifted and changed over the past few months. Um, the dragon wands used to be made from the standard Teotihuacan unit, which was the balance and harmony ring. And so it was kind of like the fairy wands where we would, as the wire was being twisted and we create that space, we invite in the consciousness of these beings within this higher vibrational heart-based space to come in and uh, merge with the tools to be of assistance. Uh, merging isn't really the right word, but they, they connect with those specific tools uh, to be of assistance. And so the dragon wands, basically we would make a run of dragon wands and you know how everything works, time isn't real, all that. So basically when we create these, this run of wands, whoever is gonna be purchasing those wands, um, they that dragon comes in for them. So then we would have a slew of wands there. We would just intuitively pick the one that needed to go to the specific person. Um, if that one wasn't in the batch, we would make a whole new run of wands, which rarely happened. Um, so basically let's see um one moment here grace says doesn't have sound sounds like pamela has sound okay so we'll keep rolling here and if you miss any of the sound here um you can always watch the replay awesome grace has sound now so with the original dragon wands that we created that were made from the harmony ring the standard to a con unit it was basically um a connector for that specific consciousness of that dragon being to work with the human who, who they felt meshed in the highest and best good. So when, um, when we, here just a few months ago, I was going to twist a nether um, run of dragon wands because we were out and it went for a couple weeks where I just wasn't feeling that space, that connection to bring those dragons in. And so the regeneration rings are that higher, higher ring. I mean, that thing took our third templates to a much higher space. And so when you use that regeneration ring, it takes everything to that higher aspect. So that's what the main portion of the new dragon wand is, the dragon wand 2.0 or the cosmic dragon, I call it. Um, this is the regeneration. And we added the golden fire infinity onto the end just to help with that whole connecting into the heart, activating the sacred heart, taking the user of the wand to that higher step as well. So instead of when the wire is twisted, instead of just a bunch of dragons flying around and they all just connect with the wire, um, when I twisted the wire for that very first um new dragon wand with the regeneration ring it's like it opened up this v-shaped field and within that field within that space is where i saw just all the dragons just all these infinite number of dragons and it's almost like it was a higher aspect of them um you know which is really hard to explain is it's basically not kind of like the human and instead of working with the human we work with the soul it was kind of like that with the dragons they still still appeared as dragons but it was a higher aspect of the dragons so when you use the new dragon wand you create a field a space and that space is just right around the wand so it's not like you actually have to do do to work with these um, which will go more into the working with them but when you're just simply holding the dragon wand, it's creating that field. It brings you into that field, especially if you focus your attention there and you take the breaths. Again, the golden fire infinity will help you get into that heart space easy. So you just take in that breath from the earth into the heart. That breath from source, soul, creator, God into the heart. And then you take that third breath of earth and sky, bring them both those energies together within the heart, and they go back out. So you are grounded, connected, 
and you are that connector of earth and sky. You are that column of light. When you're in that space, and then you put your attention onto this wand, you can do anything that you do within the sacred space, the heart, with your imagination, with your soft intentions, is going to be doing things. So basically, you can just imagine a field opening around you. And within that field is where there are all those dragons that are in the highest and best good that will step forward. Whichever dragon will step forward is for your highest and greatest good to be working with, as well as its highest and greatest good to be working with at that moment. So unlike the old dragon wands, you had one dragon that came with the wand. The new dragon wands are opening that space, that field, to where you can work with countless number of dragon beings. So that's kind of the, one of the active ways to use the wand. Um, you know, passively, again, just carrying this tool in your field is gonna be doing great things. It's raising the frequency and vibration. It's holding you in that space. When you have this within your field, you can simply go into that heart space, the three breaths, create that field around you and ask for that assistance. Um, because in this higher space field, it's, it's your soul and it's you. And so whatever assistance comes in is, you know, that's all dictated by the soul. The soul is the one who is the filter for anything when we're in that heart space and in those higher vibrational spaces. So, um, and so the reason I say that is just, you know, it's, it's just a trusting and, and a trusting and a knowing that all is in the highest and best. So that and two, and I want us to all be more empowered by our souls, but yet sometimes we do need to ask for some outside assistance along the way. So um, that was another reason I said that was just, you know, it's always the soul first. Pardon me, my phone was not shut off here. Um, so I have my phone up here, actually. I was going to tell a little bit about the old dragon wands and the council of six. So this kind of leads us into why work with the dragons in the first place. They are phenomenal beings. Um, you know, they got a bad rap back in the day when the church was harnessing them against the free will and sticking them into the basement of every church built before 1946, just for the fact that these guys are great grid line creators. Um, there's so many different dragons out there in the universe, and we just happen to have a abnormal amount of dragons on this planet. Um, so many different kinds of dragons. And of course, you know, like with many beings that used to be here in this third density reality, we could see them within the, the, the frequency spectrum of our physical eyes. They are now living in a higher physical density to where we need to see from here. Um, so the dragons are still very much on the planet and around, um, the dragons through the years, we have worked with the dragons in many different ways. Um, like let's say, for example, this, uh, this council of six, the council of six dragons that, um, that we were introduced to at one time, it's basically just some different beings that have different, um, you know, different master beings that have different gifts and skill sets. So like there's the, there's one of the six that has the dragon's sight, there's the dragon's heart, the dragon's fire, the dragon's song. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's a few others within there, which I do not remember. I need to find that and post that on our website there. But usually we're not working with the council of six. Usually we're working with many of the other master dragon beings that are out there that are here to assist. Um, you know, and the, the dragons too, I mean, so for me, I have a soul aspect that is a dragon. It was one of my incarnations. I meet a lot of people who I see a dragon walking with them, but it's also them. Um, and there's some people that have a dragon that is not a part of their soul incarnation that just walks with them as well. So when we work with the dragons, um, they are benevolent beings, uh, like Linda just commented here on, on, the, on the webinar. Um, they are benevolent beings. 
most of them really just don't care so much for human affairs. They don't get involved. It's just like, oh, whatever. But they are here in service. And that's the way this Council of Six of Dragons are, is they are here in service. Um, so some of the ways that we have worked with the dragons before, like the dragon's fire has been a big one. So um, like, let's say we have something going on in the physical, which we see maybe it's an energetic implant and we're having problems taking it out. So you feel something in the physical, can't figure out what it is. We'd bring in that dragon's fire and that dragon's breath, that dragon's fire would just come in and it's a healing and it's a clearing and it would just clear any energies out that are not ours. Um, the dragon's song has been a powerful one for some of the work that Brenda and I do some of that bigger work, um, the dragon song is something, it's a frequencies of, of unconditional love that comes through the dragon and the dragon song. So basically it's just blasting out frequency, um, a, a specific, uh, a specific frequency that is clearing dense energy. It's kind of like using our light, how our light transforms dense energy. So does the specific frequency of sound, sound and light. They're all, very similar. Um, so with the different dragons, there's many, many things that you can do to, to ask them to assist. Um, you know, for me, a lot of times I would have a dragon that was right behind me. I'd walk into a space that was just full of dense energy, come along and just flap its wings and just clear the energy of the room. I mean, you know, these guys are, are in service in the highest and best. So you can always ask for the assistance. And if your soul chooses that it's not in the highest and best, or the dragon chooses it's not in the highest and best, it won't happen. But if it is in alignment with your soul, um, then things happen. So don't be afraid to ask for whatever assistance at any time from these beings if you do resonate with them. So we're gonna, I'm gonna certainly ask for some questions here too along the way. So go ahead if you have any questions at the moment and I'll just keep chatting a little bit more about some of the other uses of the dragon wand. So the dragon wand can also, as it's a wand, can also be used to run energy. So running energy for me is, I like to make the little circles or the figure eights. Doesn't matter which way you go with your circles. Um, whatever feels right to you. To me, I just always like to do a clockwise motion. So when you're running energy, it's just basically that soft intention because when we do anything, we have an intention with it. So here, I don't even think about it. I'm just wanding and it is my intention already that energy is running. So that will that intention is what is fueling the way the energy flows within the wand. Otherwise, the energy within the wand is just like this caterpillar looking energy, not very far out from the wand. But with intention, you can send that energy outwards. So you can use this to, to do wanding on things in the physical, on the body. We've had people that just go and touch certain sp spots on the body and have reported just phenomenal shifts happening. Um, so how you use this specific tool, just like most of our tools, it's intuitive how you feel to use it when you pick it up, when you're in the heart space, and then just go with it. Don't even think about it. Just let your body, because your body is probably smarter than our mind is. And so if you're doing work, for your body or for someone else's body. Just hold it, let it go, do your thing. Um, let's see, a question. Can you clip on certain items onto the dragon wand like the elementals or the wings of talk? Yes, you can totally clip anything you want onto the end of the wands and all the energies synergize, harmonize and amplify each other. Um, let's see, because I had a, a note here that when they first held the dragon wand, it felt like the chisel, um, but 10 times stronger. So you can add any of those other items, the elementals, because that's the thing too, is that the dragons work also with the earth and the earth elementals. Um, 
even though these guys aren't from this planet, you know, as none of us really are, but I mean, they come in and they, they work with the elementals, they work with Gaia, um, they work with the human. And so when you're doing any kind of environmental work, like let's say you're working in a greenhouse or with your plants, things like that, the dragon wands are perfectly appropriate because it is going to harmonize, synergize and work with those elementals. So going back to running energy, you can run energy to certain specific things on the physical, um, just like any of our tools. If you have something that is in the emotional, the mental life situations, picture that in a bubble or in a space and you run energy to that space. So also if you're working with a person, again, when we are using these tools, we are going soul to soul with another. So that's why it's important to be in the heart space, which this infinite heart helps to get us in that heart space quickly and easily. We take the three breaths to go into the heart. Then once we do, then we can just visualize a person. We can either visualize wanting something specific on them, like Harriet's big toe out in Michigan. We can just sit there and visualize her toe right there and just be wanting it. Or else we can make that bubble around a person, around their home, their environment, their situation. Whatever it is, we are working on a soul to soul level. So again, we just try and do. If it doesn't work, then that is perfect. That is what is dictated by our soul and their soul. So again, with any of the work that we do with any of these tools, it may not come out exactly how we see it and want it to be here, which is why we go into the heart space because the soul knows best. We do the work and we let it happen in the highest and best. So that's doing a little bit of the distance work with people, places, things. I mean, you can use these on electrical transformers. You can use it on you know, capital buildings, your local courthouse, the news, the TV, whatever. Again, it's just being in the heart space. You can create a field. So for me, what I mean by creating a field is kind of like with the shaman's wand. The shaman's wand is one that um, when I first saw creating these fields, and these actually are the same frequencies, the shaman's wand and the dragon's wand. It's just that the dragon's wand is attuned to that specific higher field, which the dragon's are existing in or that we can connect with and access. So with the dragon's wand or the shaman's wand, it's basically just, again, being in the heart space, visualizing a field growing around a space, place, person, situation, whatever it is, you're creating that field. And it's a fun one to do for yourself. It's just create that field right around you. And when you create this bubble, this field around you, that is where you can do that interaction. So try this before you go to bed at night is create that field around you and ask for what assistance it is that you're wishing to clear up. Doing this stuff at night is a fantastic time to do it right before you go to bed because then a lot of our resistances shut down and things are allowed. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, yeah, and please, any other questions that come up? Because like I say, these are pretty intuitive instruments and, um, you know, there's, there's no wrong way. You can never do any harm with these tools. So there really is no wrong way to use them. You can never do any harm. So again, just going out and trying different things and seeing if the shifts take place or not. And again, when you're in the heart space and you're in alignment, that's when the shifts will start to take place. That's when we see the magic and the miracles is being in the heart space because we have a lot more discernment too from when the, within the heart space. So when we try to look at things from there, um, usually things will, will shift because we're seeing it from the heart's eye and not from that mind's eye. All right. So that was a nice short webinar. Um, 
again, we have tons more webinars. Next week is, well, actually just in like three days, we're doing the Wings of Talk. That's going to be a phenomenal webinar. So I do hope to see you guys again soon. All right. Thank you for being here. Take care.